Hello. Well, today I wanted to do something sp uh, uh, specific for uh, Halloween. So yeah, happy Halloween to everybody. And I thought, what better way uh, to sort of end the whole month of horror movies of sorts than uh, end it with um, The Exorcist, which has turned 50 years old this year. Um, I don't know if I need to totally um, go over the film. I guess, in short, it's about a, a, a girl who uh, gets possessed by a demon named Pazuzu. And her mother, who's an actress, uh, uh, seeks all the help possible medical and then <clears throat> as well as you know psychiatry and goes to uh, faith um, Chris Mc, McNeil is the uh, mother and <clears throat> her daughter is uh, Reagan McNeil and um, she goes to Father Karras who uh, as at the time of the film as we see he's having a crisis of faith it is also his mother is sick and, and dies. And uh, after some uh, <clears throat> interactions with Reagan, possessed, he then goes to ask for a exorcism by, uh, to the church. And they get uh, Father Marin, played by Max von Sydow, and the, uh, Her uh, Father Karras is played by Jason Miller, and Linda Blair is uh, Reagan. Um, but yeah, they uh, they go to perform the exorcism in the... Yeah. There you go. It's the, the I guess, the condensed uh, summarization basically one could give. May not be the best, but uh, there you go. I, when I saw this for the first time many years ago, I was just floored. I thought this was a fantastic film. Um, this version has the uh, theatrical cut and the director's cut. Um, many aren't too fond of uh, the ending to the director's cut because they like the just how the theatrical cut ends. And I kind of, I do kind of agree to that. Um, I mean, I, I often... Uh, back go back and forth to watch the extended director's cut of this as well as the theatrical which prior to uh, doing this video I watched the theatrical cut because it well it had been a while since just overall that I've seen this film and so I thought it's been a while since I even watched the theatrical because I, I believe the last few times was the director's cut so I thought why not why not just watch this film again the way it was originally shown uh, back in uh, 1973 and this is the uh, 2010 uh, digibook version there you go I have the thing for the back uh, right here and um, one thing that's cool with this is it has a whole bunch of special features which I know the 4k um and yes this actually is how it came unfortunately but overall it's in pretty good condition it was at barnes and noble and it went down at a, at a certain price which was actually not stupid expensive sometimes barnes and noble likes to have certain things you know pretty pricey and i get it for why this one because it was you know a digi book so it'd be a little more expensive but yeah this one has the original theatrical director's cut on the second disc and on the first disc the uh, extended director's cut <coughs> excuse me uh, on the first disc with the director's cut there's a, a three-part documentary on the movie's production and the legacy uh, where for the first time you, you relive the actual onset filming of the classic scenes and never before seen footage as well as Raising Hell, uh, filming The Exorcist, uh, 
Yeah. Or these are the three part documentary uh, old titles The Exorcist Locations, Georgetown, then and now. Because <coughs> the film takes place in Georgetown because uh, uh, Chris is making a movie. And, uh, and then the last one was uh, Faces of Evil, the different versions of The Exorcist, and then it has a has commentary on uh, by the director, William Friedkin, who um, won an Academy Award for The French Connection, which I've talked about, and um, who passed away this year. Um, unfortunate. He was a very talented filmmaker. Um, I know some of his films, you know, were hits or misses. I th Overall, from what I've seen, I've enjoyed what he made. So no... no um, <clears throat> no real uh, complaints there. Complaints there. On the second disc, there's a um, two commentaries: one with director William Friedkin, and then one with uh, producer director or producer screenwriter William Blatty, who also wrote the book with The Exorcist. And there was an introduction by William Friedkin, which actually played right away when I pushed play for this. There's also the feature-length 1998 documentary, The Fear of God, The Making of the Exorcist, interview gallery covering the topics of the original cut, uh, The Final Reckoning, and Stairway to Heaven, as well as the original ending. Um, <clears throat> yeah, this is a fantastic film. And I do like this set. And also, uh, in the midst of the book, here's this... Uh, a personal message from William Friedkin, which is a series of unpredictable twists of fate brought Bill, Bill Blatty and me together to make the film of The Exorcist. We met four years earlier about a script he had written that I didn't like. Appreciate my candor, but we ultimately didn't see each other again until inexplicably he sent me his novel, which I thought was a masterpiece of suspense and a positive statement about God the human condition and the relationship between the two. When he asked me to direct a film of it, I was flattered and humbled. We approached the film from different perspectives. Blatty as a Catholic who believes that there is a supernatural force of evil in the universe whose uh, uh, game plan is to convince us that it doesn't does not exist. My own approach was more pragmatic. This is a great story. <clears throat> that raises more questions than it provides answers. Our mutual goal was to make the film so realistic that it would be impossible for audiences to not believe it. Believe it. Over the years, I'm growing cl closer to Blatty's belief in the mysteries of faith, and that there are demons and there are also angels. As Hamlet said to his friend uh, Horatio, there are more things in heaven and earth than are dreamt in your philosophy. My gratitude to Wire Home Video for presenting this high definition Blu-ray, which was color timed by the cinematographer Owen Rosman and myself and represents the very best print of The Exorcist ever made. Enjoy, yeah, William Preakin. So that's really cool that this comes with that. Um, and yeah, this uh, again comes with the, yeah. interesting stuff like certain information about certain people like of the cast and the scariest film of all time <coughs> yeah, excuse me uh, and this film uh, is a, it's rare in that this film was nominated for 10 Academy Awards and won two uh, best adapted screenplay and best sound um Ellen, uh, Ellen Burstyn, who was uh, nominated for an Academy Award for this film and won an Academy Award the uh, following year for uh, uh, Alice Doesn't Live Here Anymore. Has a little uh, write-up about her, as well as uh, Linda Blair, who was nominated for Best Supporting Actress in 
uh, Ellen Burst was up for Best Actress. Um, Jason Miller was who played Father Karras, um, which was his first film, and he got nominated for Best Supporting Actor. And um, it's interesting because <clears throat> I would think he would be Best Actor since we see him throughout the film uh, consistently, but, you know, whatever. Max von Sydow, who was a, a, definitely a legend in his own right. May he rest in peace also. Um, he was not nominated for an Oscar for this, but he was nominated for um, Pele the Conqueror for Best Actor, and then he was uh, nominated for Supporting Actor for um, uh, Incredibly Loud and Close. I, I forget the name of that film unfortunately. And then there are pictures. And then there's the William Friedkin, the director. Uh, won him an Academy Award for, yeah, for the, the, the French Connection and was nominated for The Exorcist. This just has a, a lot of cool uh, stuff in the, you know, like some trivia. And one is, uh, despite the initial fears of Warner Brothers concerning the necessarily graphic nature of some of the film scenes, the ratings board of the MPAA awarded the, awarded, uh, the movie a lenient R rating without a single cut. So the theatrical cut um, uh, <clears throat> was uh, approved with an R with... Uh, Nothing cut or trimmed, even a little bit, so that's pretty cool to know. <coughs> the uh, director's cut, um, I guess, was just, you know, stuff obviously that uh, William Friedkin wanted into the film, and uh, yeah. So yeah, I saw this uh, years ago. Uh, I thought it was an amazing film. Uh, amazingly uh, uh, fantastic uh, performances by all. Uh, amazingly written and directed. Just like nothing but praise. This is a fantastic film. And I like this uh, particular set uh, that I have. Um, now, I know that the film has been released in 4K. And as I've, <clears throat> as I've uh, looked at the 4K stuff and the various variations from, like, Steelbook and such, you know, it doesn't seem like they have a whole lot of special features. It's just like the theatrical cut, I believe, and the director's cut, if I recall correctly. I don't know, I haven't, <laughs> I didn't look <laughs> right beforehand, so... I could be wrong on that, but, <clears throat> you know, well, it has both cuts, but I think um, the director's cut might be on uh, on the 4K disc, and then the Blu-ray just has a, a, the theatrical cut. Um, and it doesn't look like they have a whole lot of special features. They have commentaries on those, but that's pretty much it. Um, which, you know, if you just want the film, that's great. But for somebody like me who likes special features and watching documentaries and such regarding, uh, films, like after you've watched them, uh, for me, I don't know, like, uh, if they ever have a, another version where they have pretty much everything that's included from here. And they put that on, on you know, uh, out for 4K and Blu-ray also. Then sure, maybe I would uh, think about buying that and getting the upgrade. But <clears throat> I don't know. 
film looks fine overall for me. Uh, so I don't really have a really any complaints overall. So yeah, pretty good a film. I uh, yeah, I just uh, I really enjoy this film, and uh, I think this set is great. Um, pretty sure it's out of print now. So oh, there you go. Uh, but if you have this, that's fantastic, though. If uh, if, I, if my hunch is, uh, my suspicion is correct, I, I'm sorry, <laughs> yeah, not hunch, but my suspicion is correct, and this is out of print, I don't know, if you, like, unless you really love this film, and you want to see all the extras, and own it all on, like, a disc, I I don't think it would be good to, spend a whole bunch of money unless it's like this is your like favorite film of all time and you just missed out on this and you really have to have it otherwise I, I don't think you have to totally uh, uh, go out searching and paying a whole lot of money for it but even then I, I, would, I would look for it to at a pretty decent price it's not stupid expensive uh, though I know everybody, for everyone, it's different. That stuff is different, but, you know, for money-wise and all that. Still, it's always good to make sure you're not spending more than you really should. Uh, spend what you can on stuff like this, because, you know, movies are supposed to be fun, you know. So, yeah, you don't need to break the bank over something like searching for a, <laughs> a film that... For a specific version that's out of print. Uh, but yeah, The Exorcist is an excellent film. 50 years old and it's still amazing. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Overall. Uh, the two Oscars it won, I think it deserved. Um, I think it would have been cool to have seen the film... Win Best Actress, Supporting Actress, and Supporting Actor. Um, though, again, being up for Best Actor, I think, would have been more suitable for Jason Miller. But, you know, uh, probably situation like Pacino the year prior. You know, people didn't know who Pacino really was until The Godfather, and so he gets demoted to supporting actor whereas he was the real lead but <clears throat> you know stuff like that happens and I think also these days in particular that happens because you know if you have two people in like best actor or you put one in best actor and the field of best actors already is pretty competitive if you take like one of the leads and you put them in supporting well, then they have a better chance of winning, and so does the other guy who's up for lead actor. Um, and the lead actress, too, and supporting actress. That also, of course, goes in hand-in-hand, hand, but since I'm talking about Jason Miller, that I thought the lead actor would be uh, good to point out. But anyway, with awards or not, this is still an excellent film. Also stars... Uh, Lee J. Cobb, Kitty Wynn, uh, Jack Mc, Mc, uh, McWarren. Yeah, this is a this is a fantastic film. Uh, not just a great horror film, but just a great film in general. Um, so yeah, that's all I have to say about this film. What do you think about this? Uh, you know, if, obviously, if you've seen it, uh, do you enjoy it? Do you dislike it? Do you think it's fine? You know, why or why not? And <clears throat> uh, does this film scare you? Um, it didn't scare me, though I've heard, like, if you're Catholic or at least raised Catholic, this would have been really horrifying. So I was not raised Catholic, but, you know, still pretty f so freaky moments. At times, I have to say, even though it didn't scare me, but still, there's still some moments there, like, oh, you know, like a Reagan puking or Pazuzu, I guess, on uh, Father Karras. <clears throat> and, uh, 
And of course, he was a target of Pazuzu because of his uh, crisis of faith and, you know, yeah. Anyway, I hope all of you are doing well. Hope this uh, video was all right. And, uh, yeah. Until uh, next time, hope all of you are doing doing good. Have a great day. Hope your weekend was great, and I hope uh, your week will be all uh, great also. Please take care.